went down the wrong path numerous times. I got arrested like five times in my academy contracts, my first one. Well, rugby definitely saved me, saved me from prison time, um, for sure. Definitely would have ended up in the nick at some stage if it weren't for rugby. How well they did. What about Ellis Gens, though? And he gets over. The baby rhino has made it for for England. For Ellis Gens. There he is. So oh, another dominant collision from England. The area where I grew up was called Knoll. Knoll, for people who don't know the area too well, it's a lot of red brick houses, it's a big council estate. It's like it's a little bit south, but it's in like, the heart of Bristol. Um, it's just like a real hearty place. In Knoll, like on New Year's, every single person will come out their house banging pots and pans, like for the fireworks thing, block off the whole road. I had like a mad community-driven area. Yeah, it's a very vibrant place, to say the least. It wasn't that bad, to be honest, when I was younger. It's a predominantly white neighbourhood. My mum's uh, mixed race and my dad's white. And then my sister, weirdly, has like a throwback genetic and she's white with blonde hair, blue eyes. Um, and obviously I'm mixed race with brown hair and brown eyes. We used to cough a bit of grief for like looking completely different and people said some horrible stuff, as you can imagine. In my eyes, what I'd consider a relatively normal childhood, but then when you come into rugby, you realise quite quickly it's not, a, it's not the case. I think it helped my character, but to be honest, I was only ever comfortable in Null. It probably wasn't until I was about 13, 14 that I'd ever actually leave Null and, and go to other places, except for when I was going to rugby training over at Old Reds, which was just outside of Null. I was quite a shy character, I guess, um, in big group environments. Not very confident. I was quite small and fat when I was younger, uh, quite dumpy, so I used to get bullied a little bit. But then started playing sport, become more athletic, and obviously your confidence grows because everyone think, wants to pick you first on the team and that. So, um, yeah, confidence just bolstered as I got older. I've got some good friends that I've, I've known for all my life, really. Went to primary school with them, junior school, and didn't go to the same secondary school. My mum sent me to a different one just to, I guess, separate me from everyone because we used to get into a, a bit of trouble just hanging about, doing doing things that uh, were all sort of kids done in my area, just going on property that weren't yours or just mucking about. I don't know, I don't know I had to go into too much detail. I still hang around with the same people now, just not obviously roaming the streets of, of Knoll because um, that would be a bit weird, wouldn't it, if I was 26 walking around, hanging outside the shops. <laughs> the way I would describe myself back then was confused, um, uncomfortable with myself, didn't know what I wanted to do, rebellious, I just didn't want anyone to help me. I just didn't want to be a part of anything, really. I found rugby at Knoll Park School um, in the summer after year six when I was about, I think, 11 years old. My dad was a good role model. Um, he's a plumber, he used to work very, very hard for us to have the little that we did. Obviously really appreciate that and hopefully I'm paying him back now. So that was the strip that gave England the opportunity and then Genge went on one of those That's runs of his. Lloyd Russell, who was a mentor for myself and a few of my friends all the way through school. Um, he was a good role model for me. He used to be very, very highly regarded in the world of karate. Um, so he used to do a lot of martial arts. He told me to go down to the, the boxing gym, so that like, took me down a few times and started to enjoy it, so that's what I started to do. He, yeah, he was just like well disciplined for someone who was from St. Paul's in Bristol, which is a very rough area in Bristol, quite notorious. We actually started to behave a little bit. My struggles with dyspraxia, it's weird really, because like it's supposedly supposed to like hinder your hand-eye coordination, um, and I'm weirdly quite, <laughs> coordinated with things that I put my mind to, so like in rugby obviously, although I absolutely fumble a lot of balls, um, I take a few catches I probably shouldn't. I never really struggled with that. The thing that slowed me down the most was handwriting. I think that was why I sort of misbehaved so much in school, because my handwriting was so bad. I tried all the special pens out, but my hands were too big for them. Um, didn't make them an extra large, unfortunately. It looked like you were writing with them Harry Potter pens. Clumsiness was a big one. Judgment of space, like I also knock over a lot of glasses and stuff. Like if my mum gave me food on the sofa, I'd always spill it, just stuff like that. You, you teach yourself how to do stuff your own way. For example, I time my, I'm very s slow at tying my shoelaces, but I've got my own way that I, I taught myself to do it and a way that works for me, you know? Heartbreak when I was 16, my friends used to urge me not to come back because they said, look, there ain't nothing here for you. 
I just wanted to be back home all the time. That was why I behaved the way I did, I think. And like, I was just so different to everyone as well. Just because of where I was from, like these kids and that, like they were all taking like mad GCSEs and stuff. And not that people in Noah aren't educated, but like it's just unheard of to do some of the stuff that they were doing. I don't know, they just spoke differently to me. And I was quite abrupt and aggressive in my manner anyway. And I don't think it sat well with the kids who were like 15, 16. I don't blame them. In the summer with the academy, so you have like five weeks off, whatever. I was just I was just doing manual labor every single day. 60 quid a day, 80 quid a day. Sometimes 100 pound if you work the long shift. Come back to pre-season. I remember we done Prowler pushes first day. I was in bits. I actually got sent home from the Filton 3G turf because I couldn't push the Prowler. I literally went to push it and fell over because my back was in bits, like absolutely terrible. My parents, they tried their best, um, but I didn't expect them to pay for my insurance and a car to drive to training every day. Probably 20, 21, and my dad sat me down and said, like, you need to sort of kick on now if you're actually going to do rugby or you're going to have to look at something else. <laughs> and I'm happy now that I didn't choose to, to give it up because obviously it's paid off. I was just fed up of checking my bank every day and seeing if I had food to buy dinner and that. And it's nice to be able to buy your own grub now and then and that and go out and have a coffee without checking the bank and that. <laughs> I was so angry for it when I was younger because I wanted to prove a point to everyone. Rugby was so important for that change because my friends always wanted something different for me, my family always wanted something different for me and they, they knew that as well, so they were always pushing me. I guess that was the, the big one for me, was just my friends and family being so supportive of me being away. Because I've been away since I was 16, really, from Noel. My old man said to me once when I didn't make it through to England in the 16s, he said, you better cover me and try your hand at plumbing. Um, <laughs> so I bet he didn't think I was going to get a 50, so not yours, Dad. <laughs> I went down the wrong path numerous times. That's why I went to Leicester. Um, I got arrested like five times in my academy contract, my first one. And prior to that, I used to do some things that I probably won't ever speak about, but you can use your imagination. It's just the area it was, you know, it was heavily influenced by drugs and it's just that culture, it's just where it was, it's just what Noel is. Poverty breeds crime, doesn't it? So it's not a very affluent area, so there was a lot of it. One when I was a lot younger for GBH, a few of them. Um, to be honest, most of them were assault charges. One was on a rugby tour, weirdly enough, but they all got dropped in the end, um, thank goodness. I realised rugby could be a career when I left the academy, I guess, because the that, that's when you realise you can actually earn a living out of it. Any road bumps? Not really, just wasn't getting picked all the time. Um, which everyone thinks is the end of the world, and I did at some stage. And I didn't play for a year, I don't think. But I came to every camp, went home on the Tuesday, every single camp, every week, get hungrier and hungrier, carrot in the stick, as they say. And boy, oh boy, did I get a lot of uh, a lot of carrot. Sometimes you get frustrated and try to take the world on your own. And I think the sooner you realise that like, you're better off using the like, infrastructure around you to get the support and help that you need and talk to people about it. There's quite selfless people in rugby, I guess. They, they give everything up for people involved in the sport. I'm quite lucky that I came across those people because I genuinely wouldn't be here now. People involved in changing my life, I guess, like Alan Martinovich. He was like a sick scout, talent scout. He took me to Hartbury on a scholarship and I wouldn't have been able to go there if it, if it weren't for him. Jack Lamb, who took me in because I didn't have the money to drive back and forth to academy training, so he let me live with him for free. I can't name him all. I tell him all the time, thank you. I tried to pay him all back in any way that I can. They sacrificed for me, so I think it's nice to sacrifice for them. It definitely saved me from a lot. Rugby definitely saved me. It saved me from prison time, for sure. It definitely would have ended up in the nick at some stage if it weren't for rugby. It saved me from just throwing my life away, really. I ever thought I'd captain Leicester, to be honest. I don't think I'd ever captain any side after, after college stuff. My mates back at home, they didn't really know where Leicester was. They Googled Leicester and like found out it was like the Man United of the, of the Premiership and stuff. All started buying Leicester Tigers tops. <laughs> They're always proud of me, like they always like post up saying Noel, put a Noel on the map, Bristol on the map. 
I'm just proud to be where I'm from and I don't think there's ever been anyone from Noel West to go professional rugby. I actually aspired when I first started playing to just be a number eight at Old Reds, my local team. That's all I ever want to do is play number eight for Old Reds in the derby against Harlequins. I never thought I was going to achieve this. One thing that I'm trying to do now is just never ever regret anything. Never leave anything to chance, you know, like if I get the opportunity, just make the most out of it. Don't ever sit there thinking, what could I have done? And I think if you sort of go around with that mantra, you tend to do okay. Rugby opened my eyes to worlds I never imagined existed. Being from that small bubble in BS4 showed me that people can get on regardless of where you're from. And yeah, it just gave me a good life.